young people commit more than half of all hate crimes. That reality would become a defining lesson for students at Newark Memorial High School when a local teenager became the victim of what has been called one of California's most brutal hate crimes in recent memory. I want you guys, please, to focus on your first line in the show. This show has become beyond a show for me. Barbara Williams has been teaching drama here for nearly 30 years. After witnessing students' growing intolerance towards gays and lesbians, she chose for the school's fall play, The Laramie Project, the story of a murdered gay college student in Laramie, Wyoming. When I saw the play, I thought, oh, this is it. This is what can help me teach tolerance and this can help me teach the love that we need to teach in schools. Laramieites, 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 okay. You're part of this. Good morning, this is Mr. Roach. I have uh, five announcements today. Number but just one. weeks into rehearsals, something happened here that was eerily reminiscent of the murder students were acting out on stage. It started with the disappearance of a local teenager. Born Edward Araujo Jr., the missing 17-year-old had been living as a young woman by her chosen name, Gwen. When she told me that she didn't identify with her body, I too told her that society was not gonna be so accepting and that it was not gonna be an easy transition for, for her, for us. Um, and for the community. But we took it day by day, and, you know, regardless of whether she was Eddie or Gwen, she was still my kid. She always felt like she was a girl. She changed when she was 14, and she was more happier, I think. I think, you know, she's being very true to herself, and, you know, she was very brave. The investigation led police to 19-year-old Jaron Neighbors. He described a late-night party on the evening of Gwen's disappearance. And with the the crowd knew Gwen as a young woman by the name of Lita. Two of the men at the party had sexual relations with her on another occasion. That night, they confronted Gwen with questions about her gender. And when they discovered she was biologically male, they reacted with violence. The scene of the crime was the rented house of a former student of Newark Memorial High in a neighborhood just blocks from the city center. Six Newark young people were there that night. As the confrontation escalated, two would decide to leave without ever calling the police. In a series of attacks, Gwen was punched, slapped, kicked, and struck in the head with a skillet. Gwen's plea for her life and her last words, please don't, I have a family, didn't stop the young men from beating and strangling her to death. For the longest time, I would just hear her scream, and I'd replay it in my head over and over. I could hear her say, please don't do this to me, I have a family. You know, just to think about all the pain that she suffered that night, and then nobody to help. It was just hard. The four men then drove 150 miles away to a remote location in the Sierra foothills. In the early morning hours, they would bury Gwen's body in a shallow grave, swearing each other to secrecy. Words can't explain, you know? It's just a, a feeling in your heart. They murdered a part of us when they murdered Gwen. As the gruesome details of the case were made public, Residents were stunned to learn that one of their young people had been so brutally killed. This incident was the type of thing that we'd hoped to prevent by doing this play. We were just too late. The discovery that local youth were accused of killing Gwen intensified the tragedy. You gotta ask yourself, what got people to the point that they would feel that this behavior is okay. And then not just one, but several. Mm. I mean, in some ways, they're the result of, of the educational system and the cultural system here in Newark. And you gotta say, how'd this happen? 
what went wrong here. And that's what occurred in Laramie, too, was this, this can't happen here. Surely it must have been someone from outside that came in and did this awful thing in Laramie. And it's that kind of feeling here, too. The parallels with Laramie were about to become more remarkable. Fred Phelps, an anti-gay extremist from Kansas, who had protested after the murder of gay student Matthew Shepard, was now threatening to come hell to Newark. Are you going to be in hell too if you don't repent of yourself? I was standing here at my desk talking on the telephone, and I looked down, and right here was a fax. And I, I didn't know what it was, and, and my eyes landed on God Hates Newark. God Hates Newark High School. Phelps never came to Newark, but he sent family members and supporters to picket the high school performance of the Laramie Project. Some community members planned a counter event that would send a different message to their neighbors and the swarm of national media descending on the town. I wish our gay and lesbian children were as welcome this, this community as you are. With emotions running high, city leaders feared a clash would turn violent. We're here to just make a peaceful statement. Literally borrowing a page from the Laramie Project, concerned residents dressed as angels to protect the cast from protesters. This is my town. My kids went to this high school. We don't want any of our kids to get murdered for whatever reason. And what I need you guys to do is to feel proud of yourselves, feel confident with yourselves. Every performance of the play was sold out, and the auditorium was filled with Newark parents and citizens. On opening night, Gwen's family members were there, and Moises Kaufman, who wrote The Laramie Project, flew out from New York to witness this urgent presentation of his work. When you write a play, you have an idea of who's going to be performing it and who's going to be listening to it. But I never expected this room. I didn't expect these kids. I didn't expect this audience. Now, after Matthew, we become a town defined by an accident, a crime. We become Waco. We become Jasper. They become a definition, a noun, a sign. This is the first Maybe high school production I've seen of this play. There was something rather profound about kids this age thinking about this in front of their parents and their families and this community, and that was very moving. I'm 52 years old and I'm gay. I've lived here for a long time, and I have seen a lot. I have friends that are homosexuals or, or, or gay, and um, I mean, before I was kind of uncomfortable a little bit around it, but now, I mean, I'm completely fine with everything. I mean, it's just been so, I guess, it's, it's taught me so much actually seeing this happen, what happened in Laramie, like, happen here, and bringing the whole experience to life. It's just... I think it's really matured everybody that's in the cast. But every time you were called a fag or, or a, a les or whatever. Most people, I don't think they really realize, you know, what they're doing. Like, whenever they say, oh, that's so gay, this is so gay, that, that word just, it's like, it's natural to everybody. I didn't really think of it as much until I performed in the show, and then it really started to get on my nerves. We are like this. We are like this. One of my scenes, she says, um, how could this not be a town where this kind of thing happens? Because it happened here. And after I said it, I totally, totally understood it. Like before I was just saying it, you know, they were just my lines. And now I get it. Because of our big wings, we're gonna completely block him. All of a sudden here, we came to a room to listen to teenagers tell us about hate and about understanding and about compassion. and and to talk to us about how we rise from the destruction of this. And we are a group of people bringing forth the message of peace, love, and compassion. And we're calling it angel action. 
cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions. And I knew that my angels were going to be taking the brunt of everything he had to yell and say. I mean, we were going to be blocking his view, and he was going to be, like, pissed off to all hell. So I went out and bought all my angels earplugs. <laughs> I've worked in Newark since 1968. Nothing, I think, that great happened in Newark ever than that night. We are Laramie now. Everything mirrors it. In a, you know, everything we've seen, it's just astounding. The play was a success, but after the curtains closed, Newark would have to examine how this brutal killing could have happened here.